Housewives were busy in the 1800s. Just like today, she would have to travel to town to get the provisions for her family. Or she could wait for the delivery men who came right to her house. She could purchase her favorite cuts right from the meat market. Portland, Oregon, they would deliver coffee, spices, and extracts. Of course, you would need ice to keep everything fresh. If she didn't have time to do her own baking, she could get some loaves of bread from the local bakery. She could also have her husband's shirts starched and ironed. There was also medicines and tonics to keep the whole family healthy. And for a keepsake, you could get the family photographed. All this would leave more time for the busy housewife to sit down and read the newspaper. Today's issue is Thursday, May 29th, 1879. Lawless Whites in the Indian Territory, St. Louis, May 24th. Information from the Indian Territory is to the effect that part of the Canadian River Valley in the Chickasaw Nation is infested with lawless white men who are depredating upon the property of the Indians and violating their personal rights. And if the government does not protect the Indians and put a stop to unlawful invasion, there may be very serious trouble. New today, Mrs. DeFries is now prepared to give pupils instruction on the pianoforte at her residence corner of Clay and East Park Streets. Lost at the New Market Theater on Saturday afternoon, a fur boa long. A reward will be given if it is left at this office. Notice, a gentleman wishing janitors, rooms looked after, offices kept in order, etc., will do well to apply to the janitor of the YMCA rooms, corner of First and Alder. A. S. Miller and Son, bridge builders and contractors for all kinds of heavy framework. Office, Southeast Corner, First and Morrison Streets, Portland. Portland City News. Over the Cascades. An accident occurred at the Cascades on Friday evening, by which one of the men employed on the locks lost his life. His name was H. S. Bogardus. One of the boats having been left on the Washington side, Bogardus and Chris Halberston, both laborers on the works, took a small boat and went over after it. They started back with both boats, one man in each. Lookers on say they undertook to sail over, one boat towing the other. They allowed themselves to drift too far down before taking the oars. Seeing they were in danger of going over the rapids, they seized the oars, but it was too late. Halverston broke one of his oars, but after going over the first fall, succeeded in getting his boat into an eddy and was saved. Bogardus was carried down over the falls below and undoubtedly was lost. It is not known here where he was from or whether he had a family or not. A costly iron fence, probably the finest iron fence on this coast, has recently been erected just out of Oakland in front of the residence of Mr. R. R. Thompson. His grounds have a frontage of 310 feet, along which the owner resolved to put up a fence which would stand for centuries as a bar to trespassage. A deep trench was dug for the foundation and 23,000 bricks were used in preparing for the iron coping. The posts are of iron securely anchored deep in the ground and securely held in the wall by a heavy iron collar. 
They are over 7 feet in height, and ample spaces are left for a free circulation of air. The pickets are heavy bars of wrought iron, 7 eighths of an inch square, surmounted by an ornamental cast iron point. The gate posts, cast in pieces, are held together in the most substantial manner and are hollow, and a large rose bush, trained through the openings on each side, passes up the post along the arch to the center. 40,000 pounds of iron were used in the building of this fence, the total of which was about six thousand dollars. The large and magnificent displays made recently by Abel, the photographer, indicates a good business. Abel has enjoyed an astonishing run. When you want the best, call on him. He does not profess to do work by lightning. The woman, who is truly womanly, is never happy with a sallow, rough, wan, blotched, or otherwise blemished complexion. Give her the costliest garment, that is well. Store her mind with all the graces of elegant culture, that is better. Let her put on religion's sweet array, which is the best of all. Still, you cannot make a true woman truly happy without a fair and clear complexion. The Oregon Blood Purifier, by its great blood cleansing properties, removes all blotches, pimples, etc. from the skin, imparting to it that pure marble-like tint and brilliancy so much admired by the fair sex. Ladies, do you want a pure blooming complexion? If so, a few applications of Hagen's Magnolia Balm will gratify you to your heart's content. It does away with sallowness, redness, pimples, blotches, and all diseases and imperfections of the skin. It overcomes the flushed appearance of heat, fatigue, and excitement. It makes a lady of 30 appear 20, and so natural, gradual, and perfect are its effects that it is impossible to detect its application. Do you want to learn more about women's lives in the 1800s? You can learn more information in this book, Guardians of the Home, Women's Lives in the 1800s. If you'd like to purchase a copy, you can go to my descriptions and find the link that'll take you right to Amazon. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to my channel, Life in 1800s Newspapers, by clicking on these two people.